bitch, yeah. She now rocking with Mr. Wit. A little flavor from Q Beats, you know that this a hit. Michael Jackson bad, yeah, this is it. A few months ago, I was about to call it quits. Until I came across personalized math tutoring. FBT, the number one solution. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. This is Mr. Wit with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today we'll be talking about subtracting radicals. All right, let's check it out. Here's problem number one. We have 15 times the square root of 13 minus 8 times the square root of 13. Anytime you're adding or subtracting radicals, ladies and gentlemen, you must have like terms. It's easy to determine whether you have like terms depending on your radicals themselves. They have to be identical. So notice that in problem number one, I have the square root of 13 here in the first term, and I also have the square root of 13 in the second term. That tells me that I can combine them together, meaning I can add or subtract them. But since we're subtracting, we'll subtract. So looking at your coefficients of 15 and negative 8, you'll combine those. So in other words, 15 minus 8 will give me 7, and I'll keep that same square root of 13, and that's it. That's it. That's the answer. I'll put a red box around this. So in problem number one, we had 15 square root of 13 minus 8 square root of 13 gave us an answer of 7 square root of 13, and that was it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's keep moving. Problem number two, I have the square root of 125 minus the square root of 20. You're always going to be responsible for simplifying your radicals in these problems. And in order to do that, you want to focus on the index. That's right. What is the index of my radical? In other words, what root am I needing to find? Well, here, this is a square root. So I'm looking for perfect squares underneath the radical symbol. So I'm going to show this by expanding that 125 into 25 times 5 because that's the largest perfect square within 125 and the largest perfect square within 20 is the number 4. So I can rewrite that 20 as 4 times 5. From there, I'm able to take the square root of 25 and 4 to get an answer that reads 5 times the square root of 5 minus 2 times the square root of 5 as well. So that means that now that I have like terms, because notice how these two terms both have the square root of 5, I'm now able to subtract. So when you subtract, you subtract the coefficients, the numbers in front of the radical sign. So 5 minus 2, that gives me 3 times the square root of 5, and this is the answer. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Done and done. So starting out, problem number two, we were able to showcase that within 125, the largest perfect square is 25, and in 20, the largest perfect square is 4. So this reads now as the square root of 25 times 5 minus the square root of 4 times 5. Then taking the square root of 25, you bring out the 5. Taking the square root of 4, you bring out the 2. And then you finally subtract the numbers in front of the radicals. 5 minus 2 is always 3 with that same exact radical 5 and done. That's it. That was problem number two, ladies and gentlemen. Problem number three is next. In problem number three, we have three times the cube root of 16 minus four times the cube root of two. So in this problem, my index has changed. It's no longer two. I'm no longer looking for squares. I'm looking for perfect cubes now because the index is three. I know that the largest perfect cube within 16, a factor of 16 that's a perfect cube, is the number eight. So I'm going to rewrite this as eight times two. In our second term, that cube root of 2, it can't be broken down any further, so I'll just leave it the way it is. When you're looking for the cube root of 8, you should know that 2 times 2 times 2 will give you 8. So therefore, this coefficient of 3 will multiply on the result of the cube root of 8, which is 2. That leaves me with the cube root of 2 minus 4 times the cube root of 2, just like that. Then we'll multiply that 3 times 2. And that'll give me 6 times the cube root of 2 minus 4 times the cube root of 2. And then subtracting 6 minus 4, that gives me 2 times the cube root of 2, which is my answer. That's it. So in this problem, we started out by simplifying our radicals first. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that we already have posted a video for simplifying square roots as well as working with different radicals. So you want to check that out as far as how to go about simplifying your radicals there. All right, we got a link. I'll put a link right down there for you. Okay, so we end up breaking down the 16 into 8 times 2. The 2 was already in its most simplified form. We then took the cube root of 8, which is 2, which multiplies times that coefficient of 3. And 3 times 2 gives me 6. 
And then finally, we ended up with 6 times the cube root of 2 minus 4 times the cube root of 2. Since these radicals are identical, we can subtract the coefficients, and 6 minus 4 is always 2, and you keep the exact same radical as you had in the previous step, that cube root of 2. And that was it. Let's move on. Next problem. Problem number four, we have the cube root of 64m to the fourth power n to the fifth power minus the cube root of negative 27m to the tenth power n to the fourteenth power. Now, it just so turns out that 64 and 27, that negative 27, are already perfect cubes. So I won't have to manipulate those numbers at all. They're fine the way they are. However, when I look at the variables and their exponents, I want to ensure that I'm looking at multiples of 3 on their exponents. So I want to try to find all of the multiples of 3 within these exponents on the variables that I can because my index is 3. In other words, we're looking for perfect cubes. So let's show the perfect cubes in the problem. Let's go ahead and show that. So I'll rewrite this as the cube root of 64. I'm going to change this m to the fourth power into m to the third power times m. That's because m cubed times m to the first power is still m to the fourth power, but I've shown that a part of that we can take out. In other words, we can simplify because it's a perfect cube there. Then, looking at the n to the fifth power, I can change that into n to the third power times n squared. All right, And that's all underneath that first radical there, that first cube root. This is going to be minus the cube root of negative 27 m to the ninth power times m times n to the twelfth power n squared. So that's what I have thus far. Once again, I'm looking for the largest multiple of 3 in those exponents on the variables there. So within 10, I can break up that m to the 10th power into m to the 9th power times m, and then the n to the 14th power, the largest multiple of 3 that goes into 14 without going over, is 12, and that left me with two more n's. So I have n to the 12th power times n squared. Now, I can go ahead and take the cube root of my perfect cubes. That's 64, the m to the third power, the n to the third power, as well as this negative 27, the m to the ninth power, as well as the n to the twelfth power. So let's do that. The cube root of 64 is 4. The cube root of m to the third power, just divide the exponents here. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I end up with m to the first power. Same thing applies to the n to the third power. I'll just have n to the first power. And then that leaves me with the cube root of what's left over inside of the radical here. And that's going to be m n squared, just like that. Then I have a negative. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. So I'm writing that as minus a negative 3 there. The cube root of m to the ninth power, you simply divide the exponents, so that'll be m cubed. And then I can also divide that n to the 12th power, so that's 12 divided by 3 gives me n to the 4th power. And that leaves me with the cube root of m n squared, ladies and gentlemen, just like that. From here, I'm going to go ahead and bring down this 4mn times the cube root of mn squared. And this negative times that negative 3 will give me a positive 3. m to the third power, n to the fourth power times the cube root of mn squared. And ladies and gentlemen, notice that we do have identical radicals. However, your variables on the outside are not the same. So I do have mn for that first term on the outside of the radical. But over here in that second term, the m is to the third power and the n is to the fourth power. So that makes these unlike terms. What you can do, though, being as though this is one form of the answer, some teachers would prefer that you go ahead and show that you can factor out that GCF in the answer here. So let me show you that version. So because these are unlike terms, you could say that this is the answer right here. However, I will show that you could write it a different way. We could show that both of these terms have mn times the cube root of mn squared. Then what's left over, in other words, Factoring out this mn cube root of mn squared, that'll leave me with 4 plus 3m squared n to the third power. All right? So you could write it that way as well, factoring out the GCF. So either version of this is correct, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Good stuff. Just letting you know. Okay. So that's problem number four. Let's move on. 
And problem number five, I have the square root of a cubed b to the fifth power minus two times the square root of a to the seventh power b cubed. So what we'll do next is we'll attempt to simplify this in hopes that we will have like terms that we can subtract. So in our first term, because our index is two, I'll be showing all of my perfect squares within the problem, within the radicand. So this can be rewritten as a squared a b to the fourth power b. That shows that within that a cubed, I had a perfect square of a squared. Within that b to the fifth power, I had b to the fourth power times b. Then in the second term, underneath the radical, I'll be able to show that I have a to the sixth power times a, and then b to the second power times b, just like that. Then I'll take the square root of a squared, which is a. The square root of b to the fourth power is b squared, and that'll leave me with the square root of a b. That's right, these two variables here are what was left over after I took the square root of the radicand. From there, I'll have minus two. Remember, divide the exponent and the index, so six divided by that two there is gonna be a to the third power, so six divided by two is three. And then taking the square root of b squared, that leaves me with b to the first power, and what's left underneath the radical is going to be a, b. All right, just like that. Okay, notice once again that we do not have like terms. Yes, your radicals are identical, but because the variables on the outside of the radicals are not identical to one another, you don't have a way to subtract these directly. In other words, your variables all have to be the same inside and out in order to add or subtract. So this is your answer right here. All right. However, just like in the previous problem, you could factor out a GCF and write your answer that way. I can show that I can factor out AB times the square root of AB, and that'll leave me with B minus 2A squared, and that's it. All right, I can write it just like that. So these are two different forms of the answer, one factoring out the GCF, the other one just showing that, hey, these terms are unlike terms, therefore I can't continue. All righty. That was problem number five, ladies and gentlemen. In problem number six, we have one over the square root of three minus two over the square root of 12. In this problem here, I'm going to start by getting a common denominator. So the way I can go about doing that is by simplifying that square root of 12 in this second fraction here. So this is going to be minus two times, I can show inside the radical that this is the square root of four times three. Remembering that the largest perfect square within 12 is four, and I can use that to simplify the problem. From there, I'll have one over the square root of three minus 2 over 2 square root of 3, like so. Notice that our numerator and denominator both have a 2, so I can simplify that. In other words, 2 will go into itself once, and 2 goes into itself once. So that I'll end up with 1 over the square root of 3 minus 1 over the square root of 3. Well, last time I checked, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you have additive inverses, the answer is 0. In other words, 1 over square root of 3 minus 1 over square root of 3 is just 0. Anything minus itself is going to give you an answer of zero. Done and done, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and that was problem number six. All right, let's look at our next problem, problem number seven. In problem number seven, I have three times the square root of 28p minus four times the square root of 63p. So in this problem, I'm going to attempt to simplify as much as possible first. So I'm bringing down the fact that I have three, and I can expand that 28 into four times seven P, just like that. In other words, the largest perfect square within 28 is 4 minus 4, and the largest perfect square within 63 is going to be 9. So this will be 9 times 7P, just like that. All right. So taking the square root of 4, that's just going to be 2. That'll leave me with the square root of 7P minus 4 times the square root of 9 is 3. That'll be times the square root of 7p. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be multiplying those values on the outside of the radicals there. So 3 times 2 gives me 6 times the square root of 7p minus 12 times the square root of 7p. And that's what I have right there, ladies and gentlemen. And notice that our radicals are identical, and so therefore we can actually subtract. So here I'll take the coefficient of positive 6 and negative 12 and combine that to get a negative 6 times the square root of 7p, and this is my answer here. Done. That's it. All right, that's problem number seven, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move on. I think I got another for you. Yep, I do. Problem number eight. We're looking at five times the fourth root of 32x to the eighth power y minus three x squared 
times the fourth root of 162y. Let's see how to work these problems out here. All right, so what I can do here is I can expand that 32 underneath that radical symbol here into 16 times 2 x to the eighth power y. Now I did that because I'm looking for perfect fourths this time and 16 is the same as 2 to the fourth power. So I'm just showing that hey my largest perfect fourth within 32 is 16. All right. In the second term I have 3x squared times the fourth root of 81 times 2y. Once again I want to show the largest perfect fourth within that value and in 162 the largest perfect fourth is 81. That's right 81 is the result of 3 to the fourth power so that's what I have. From here I'll end up taking the fourth root of 16 which is 2 so I'll rewrite this as 5 times 2 then dividing that 8 on that variable x with the index of 4 8 divided by 4 is 2 so that leaves me with x squared inside of these parentheses here that I have on the outside of the radical and this will be times the fourth root of 2y. That's what I have thus far. Then with the second term I have a negative 3x squared. The fourth root of 81 is 3 and ladies and gentlemen that'll leave me with the fourth root of 2y being that's what's left over. Alright so now let's multiply our coefficients with what we have on the outside here. We have 5 times 2x squared that leaves me with 10x squared times the fourth root of 2y minus this will be 3x squared times 3 will be 9x squared times the fourth root of 2i. Alright ladies and gentlemen I'm glad we got to this situation here because for once I can show you that even though our radicals are identical we also need to ensure that the variables outside the radicals are also identical in order to truly subtract. So because I do have an x squared on the outside of the radical as well as having an x squared on the outside of the radical here we can simply subtract 10 minus 9 to get 1 x squared times the fourth root of 2y and that's my answer there. So we were able to truly subtract these be because not only are the radicals the same but also the variables on the outside of the radicals. They have the exact same variables with the exact same exponents on those variables. So 10 minus 9 gave me 1x squared fourth root of 2y and done. Alright that's the answer. Let's put a box around that. Good job. Good problem. All right, that was problem number eight, ladies and gentlemen. And this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring asking you to please rate, comment, and subscribe. That was subtracting radicals from Fort Bend Tutoring. Peace. So what you waiting on? Everything is online. Just hit the website. They even got FaceTime. Subscribe to the YouTube. Request the video. Watch your math skills go from all right to incredible. They got math, got algebra, got geometry. Pre-cal calculus, can't forget trigonometry.